You're listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn, where you'll find uplifting and practical advice for everyday living, creative inspiration for do-it-yourself projects, and recommendations for books and resources that will encourage you to embrace your life repurposed. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. Well, here we are at episode eight of Life Repurposed. I hope you've been following me along on the journey, but if you haven't, you can always go back to YouTube or you can go back to the podcasts that are on Google Play, they're on iTunes, they are also on my website, so you can always catch up. Nothing um, precedes the others in that you don't have to have listened to the other episodes in order to get something out of this one at all. Nothing like that, but I just would love to have you catch up because I really want to share my heart in every episode. And I hope that you will go ahead and subscribe if you're on iTunes so that you can get the episode every time I put a new one out there. I'm doing two a month, so they'll come right to your podcast playlist and download and then you can listen to them. And if you're a YouTube follower, you can do the same thing. You can subscribe. So I encourage you to do that. And I'm saying that today and talking about past episodes because in looking back at the last few, I realized that I've been kind of serious. I've been a little bit heavy on some of the topics. And so while today we'll have plenty of truth in it, I also want to lighten up just a little bit, maybe do a little bit of a rant about what's on my heart right now, and hopefully we can giggle together a little bit. If the guys are watching, it's like, yeah, you might as well just um, pass your phone or your computer over to your wife or your girlfriend or your sister because I'm really talking to them today. And if you want to just listen in, guys, just to get a little sneak peek into the minds of women, that's great because my husband is still trying to figure me out after 30 years of, almost 30 years of marriage. So go ahead and listen in if you're like, I'm trying to figure women out and I need some clues. <laughs> so anyway, I've, I think I've been a little bit serious. And so today I wanted to um, talk a little bit about what happens when you're a month into your goals from the new year. So um, some of you got through Christmas and you put away all the candy dishes and cookie trays and everything and all the treats are gone off of them and now those treats are sort of living on your backside if you get my drift here. You know that over Christmas a few pounds creeped on because of the extra treats and so now you're working on getting those off. And what happens in that journey is there is a lot of up and down in um, trying to get healthier and trying to lose some weight. And so um, if you've been trying to lose a couple of pounds or 50 or something like that, um, you know the journey and you know how it goes. So what happens is at first we get that starting weight and I've actually come to a place now where I can weigh myself every day, but that was totally not me before. So in the past, whenever I've had to weigh myself, I get on the scale and I do the side to side lean and I think I'll just wait a couple hours and sweat it out and um, dehydrate myself just a little bit and then get on the scale. Seriously, I know the mind games that some of us play. So um, that's how it sometimes goes when we're thinking about a number on the scale. I've gotten to a place now where I can just get on the scale, let the number go to my Bluetooth on my phone and then just move on with my day. At the end of the week, I have a chart of where I've been and it helps me to evaluate, but it does not value me, just so you get the difference between evaluating and valuing. The other thing I want to tell you is a little secret that um, some of the moms who used to bring kids to my house for piano lessons didn't know was that when you have a Bluetooth scale at somebody's house, if you get on their scale and it is Bluetooth, it sends your number to their phone. So just so you know, there were some mornings when I logged in, oh, there are some people who might be watching this who are freaking out right now, but um, I would log into mine and discover some extra numbers on there. Um, So yeah, if you go to someone else's house and you use their scale, uh, they might know the number. I'm really comfortable with sharing the number with uh, my best friend and I'm comfortable with um, sharing the number with a few girlfriends, but I'm not gonna put it out there on social media. I don't know why. Um, That is kind of a a funny thing where we get to that. I don't even tell my husband because in all of our married life, I have always weighed more than him and the gap has widened as I've widened. And so um, I don't tell him that number, but that's okay. So anyway, what happens is when we work on trying to get healthier and we start stepping on the scale and we're seeing a little bit of progress and it's starting to move and the clothes are getting a little bit bigger, 
we start to wonder if somebody else will notice that we've lost anything. Now last year, in a whole year of eating healthy and really trying to stick to a plan, I lost eight whopping pounds. It, eight pounds don't show up very well um, for people to notice. But if you lost 50 pounds or 20 pounds, people start to notice. So it's really great when a friend rejoices with us and notices and somebody says, oh, you're losing weight, aren't you? So that's what most of us think. Now, I am a little bit more complex in that if I have worked really hard to lose some weight and somebody says, you're losing weight, aren't you? A lot goes on in my mind. First, what happens is it's usually a friend who has no intention of losing any weight at that moment, who notices you've lost some, and then they look at you and um, they say it in a certain tone. It doesn't sound like this. It doesn't sound like, you're losing weight, aren't you? No, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds more like this. You're losing weight, aren't you? It's like said in that same tone as if they were accusing me of something, like you stole money from my wallet, didn't you? Yeah, you know, you have those friends. You maybe are one of those friends. You get it, you know what it's like. So what happens is sometimes we're not so supportive of one another and sometimes we are. And so um, what it tells me is that they didn't say anything when I gained weight and now they're saying I look great. What does that mean? See, four years ago I lost 20 pounds and two years ago I gained 20 pounds. Yeah, do the math, uh-huh. So none of my friends came up to me and said anything to me. Nobody said you're gaining weight, aren't you? But when somebody says to me after I've lost a few pounds, you're looking really great, aren't you? In my mind, they're saying, you've looked like a water buffalo for the last two years. Yeah, I know, it's complex. It's why husbands can't figure out if they're supposed to compliment their wives or hold them accountable. They just can't figure it out. I know, we're complex. So anyway, what happens along the way is there's this game, it's complicated, it, there's just so many layers to it that we can't even possibly get into today. But for me, the victories have to come from within and not from what other people say. So I love to pull out some clothes that uh, didn't fit me as well before and now they fit me. And I have a couple in my closet that I've kept. They're my incentive pants. And um, they're what I call my skinny jeans, but they're not the skinny jeans like we have now. They are actually skinny in that they fit me when I was 50 pounds lighter, and they are stonewashed, pleated, waist above the belly button. Yeah, I know, I've kept them for a long time. So they're the kind of jeans that we had from, you know, like 24 years ago before I had babies jeans. And the really cool thing is I found out after shopping in Target not that long ago that they're actually coming back into style. So now is like the perfect time for me to lose 50 pounds and get into those jeans. I know, this is, uh, it's complicated, yes. I've said that too many times, it's complicated, but it just is. So what happens when our insecurity begins to kick in is that we're, the complexity starts to come out. We like it when somebody notices when we've lost weight or we've changed or we've gotten into shape. We love it when that happens. But then on the other hand, when somebody says we look fabulous, we're not really sure how to take that. And it gets me thinking about what would it be like if we were actually brutally honest with each other? Like what if you bumped into somebody at the mall and let's just say old friends bump in and um, we haven't seen each other in a couple of years. Our first greetings usually have to do with, you look great, I love your hair. What if it had to do with, oh, look at you, look at that double chin you have there since the last time I saw you. Oh, and look at your thighs. Hmm, yeah. No, we don't do that kind of thing. But wouldn't it be fun to say, oh, life's been great since I discovered the South Beach whale diet. Yeah, I've been waiting for an opportunity to say that, but nobody's ever been that blunt with me. So anyway, if this was too real for you, I'm really thankful I'm right with you saying, thank goodness we're not that way with each other. So we have to figure out some kind of balance between being real and being fake without being cruel. You get it? There is a difference. So what I'm here today to encourage you to think about is to get rid of some of the motivation behind why we've been bluffing and photoshopping and counterfeiting and playing games with the scale for so long 
And we don't even know anymore where the real me is and where the facade begins. It's just something that we have in our head. So why is it so hard to be authentic? Let's just talk for a couple minutes about hiding stuff. So the Department of Motor Vehicles knows my fake body weight. I know my real body weight. Nobody at the DMV has said to me, you are the fluffiest 134 pound woman we've, woman we've ever seen. Nobody's ever said that. Why do I hide from even the Department of Motor Vehicles who I really am? I think it goes deeper than just a number. I think it comes down to hiding the truth because it reminds us that there's more pain under the surface. You see, for most of us, we got the way we are along the way for a multi-layered collection of reasons. It wasn't just an overnight thing. If you really look at why some people overeat or why some people crawl into bed and never want to go to the gym ever, <laughs> why um, some of us are not that motivated by physical fitness, why some people are overly motivated by physical fitness, why some people have plastic surgery, why we look at all those things, it's a multi-layered thing where it often comes down to some emotional pain. And so in hiding it in some way, overcompensating, undercompensating, whatever it is, is our go-to thing that makes us feel functional. We end up trying to stuff down some of the voices in our head from the past. And some of those are because somebody said something like you're worthless, you're ugly, you're flawed. Um, maybe it's because along the way someone caused you to be insecure about your physical appearance. Maybe it was your nose or your chin or your hair or your thighs or your lack of curves or your too much curves. Whatever it is, you've decided you're not good enough as you are. I'm imagining these are probably just carelessly spoken words where somebody didn't even realize what they were thinking, but sometimes it actually is somebody who is intending to be abusive. So whatever the source, we've packed away these perceptions, and here we are with the scale up and the scale down and the back and forth and all those kinds of things. And it makes us skeptical of when people actually compliment us, which is where we come back to what I said about the water buffalo com comment, that thought in my head. When someone says, I love you, we think they must be bluffing. Now I'm saying we, I'm not trying to lump all of us in this. Some of you can relate to this, so that's why I'm saying we, I know you can. When our spouse tells us or, or someone tells us that we're attractive, we do that curl your lip, narrow your eye, and yeah, right. Yeah, there are some days where my husband says, you look beautiful today, and I'm like, what in the world? What is he seeing? I look like somebody who just had my mug shot taken. I don't know where he gets it from. He's kind and he's complimentary and the voice in my head can't receive what he's saying to me. If your best friend tells you you look lovely, she means it. She's not just trying to be nice to you. When we're chained to the hurt, we experience all kinds of things like depression and lack of joy and a sense of hopelessness. And so the reason I'm getting candid with you and ranting just a little bit about it is because I long for all of us and I'm putting me in here too because I am right with all of you. I long for all of us to be able to just forget about the numbers, to forget about the appearance, and to love ourselves and love other people where they are. And that means no matter where you are in your journey, you're beautiful. If you are in an overweight condition and you're working on your health, you are beautiful where you are and God bless you for working on it because you want to have a healthier life. It doesn't change your beauty, it just changes how you feel about life and your energy and all of those things. You are a beautiful person and I know there's somebody out there today that needs to hear you are a beautiful person. So when I think about the ups and downs and all the places I've been with physical appearance in my almost 50 years of life, I can tell you that I'm learning this lesson too, that beauty comes from who I am innately as a person and it comes from how I project myself to other people and not the shell of my body and how it looks on the outside. And so this is why I wrote The Repurposed and Upcycled Life. And in the end of this episode, I am going to um, talk about that book briefly and explain a little bit more about it. So I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so 
The scale doesn't define you. You're beautiful and wonderful, even if you have lumps and rolls that have been hanging around for 25 years, 50 years, however long you are beautiful. Ask me, I know. <laughs> so um, let's have a joyful life and fill it with grace for other people. And that is life repurposed. So today for our really short repurposing segment, I wanted to um, talk to you about old cameras and I have a couple that I have here. Um, I have collected at garage sales a lot of these old cameras. I think you can see um, this one here. I have all different, uh, different decades and different ages of cameras. Um, this one is one of my favorites that was given to me as a gift by somebody that stayed at my house. Um, oh, it's super, super dusty. Um, I love these old cameras. I have them decorating on the walls. They're really not functional. I just have them as art. And there's a reason for why I have them as art. Most of the things that I have in my house that are repurposed are because I feel like there's some story behind them. I feel like photos tell a story and cameras tell a story. They, they capture just a little bit. They don't get all the details. And so behind a photo, there could have been joy, there could have been pain. We don't know the rest of the story, but they capture in that moment this one second of time. And in the past, it was put on paper. And I love the old cameras because it reminds me of how you took a photo, you developed the photo, and that was it. That was the photo. And now we take a photo on our smartphone and we do it in a whole bunch of angles uh, before we put the photo out there. And then um, we suck in, I know this because I have photoshopped family photos before to make myself look smaller. I know this is ridiculous, but I have done it. Um, we do the colors and the lighting and with one click of a mouse, we can paint a sunrise or a sunset where there was nothing and it's all because we have the software to do that. So the old cameras like these ones remind me of what it was like when we didn't manipulate so much and when photos were just real and they were what they were. So the repurposed things tell a story for me. Um, when I'm looking through my Instagram feed, I see all kinds of selfies, and yes, I do take selfies, so I'm not anti-selfies, but there are times when I go and I think, oh, I want to follow this person, and I look, and every single photo of them is them with their cheeks sucked in in some way, or they're posing a certain way to try to get the right angle of their chin, and if you're listening on audio, you can't see that I'm doing some of this on camera, but that's okay. So um, I look at that and I think, oh, I, I just don't think I want to follow this person because everything is about them, and I want to see the people who are real. I want to see the unphotoshopped versions, the unfiltered versions. I want to see the truth. I want to see what you really fed your kids for breakfast and not necessarily the fake photo that you put up of the um, perfectly healthy breakfast that you wish you had fed them for breakfast. Um, so anyway, these old cameras are my reminder of keeping it real. I would love to know what your repurposed or trash to treasure things are that you have that remind you of something of a story. So please send them to me because actually I would love to feature them. I have a Facebook page called Trash to Treasure Decorating and I would love to have before and afters or your favorite junk finds. So send them and I will feature them and give you some credit. So that is um, our repurposing segment. A little bit about why I love repurposing items. Okay, so for our last segment, I want to talk to you about my book. Now, I've featured other resources in the previous episodes, and I promise next time I'll feature somebody else's again, but I, was, I thought this was a good time to give myself a turn because what I shared with you from my rant in the beginning of this episode was um, part of what I shared in the first chapter of this book, The Repurposed and Upcycled Life When God Turns Trash to Treasure. I wrote this book because I had things on my heart that I felt like other women needed to hear. And so this just talks about how some of 
our most disappointing and discouraging circumstances in life can be opportunities for God to show us where the treasure is in the midst of them. Or even later on when we discover there was treasure there all along and we didn't know it was there. And so um, this book is really my heart and just sharing it for you with some humor and some stories and some inspiration and just hoping that I can encourage you on your journey. And then um, this year I wrote a Bible study book to go along with it. So you can see one is big and one is little. And this workbook is um, one where there are questions for discussion and little spots to fill in and doodles to color and some pages for journaling. And this is for a small group Bible study who wants to take the content of the repurposed and upcycled life and just go deeper and look at where there's a scripture application in it. And so if you um, are looking for material for a women's small group, contact me directly because I can give you a price quote on a bulk order discount that's going to save you a lot over if you purchased it at retail price online. So go ahead and send me an email or any kind of social media message and I'd be happy to quote that out for you. So that gives you a little idea of why I love repurposing, why this podcast and blog is called Life Repurposed, and I hope that you will continue to connect with me by listening in, by sharing your story, by sharing this story with others, and also by sending me um, just some personal emails or messages on how I can pray for you and how I can be encouraging you. So I wish you a blessed day, and until next time, this is Life Repurposed. If you want to find links to the resources that I talk about in this episode, you will find it at michellerayburn.com slash eight. Really easy to find just on my website, michellerayburn.com slash eight. You will find the show notes and some links where you can click directly through to find the books that I've talked about. And then you'll also find other episodes on there and you'll find links to some other resources that I've shared in the past. So be sure to check out the blog to get the show notes. You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com.